Hello everyone! In this video, we're going to briefly look at the fascinating history of Haitian Creole. Creole Aïsie. They are French-based Creole, Spanish and English-based Creole languages. Some of those Creole languages are no longer in existence. Haitian Creole is one of the best known and most used Creole languages. You might be wondering, what is a Creole language? A Creole is a new language that grew out of people speaking different languages and not having many ways or resources to learn each other's languages. The more studied Creole languages came out of the oppressive conditions, especially plantation slavery, created by European colonialism and imperialism. Before we continue, we want to welcome you to Color My Culture. Thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this video. So let us look at the history of Haitian Creole. Haitian Creole is based largely on 18th century French, some African languages, as well as influences from languages such as Arawak, Taino, English, Arabic, Portuguese, and Spanish. The majority of Haitians came from West Africa, and a good number also came from Central Africa. The people of West Africa spoke primarily Gaba languages. In case I'm not pronouncing this correctly, I want to take the time to spell it out. That is G-B-E languages. Gaba languages. The Gaba languages were traditionally placed in the Kwa branch of the Niger Congo languages. It is taught that Haitian Creole was formed between 1680 and 1740. As you probably already know, the actions of the European explorers wiped out the majority of the island's native people very early on. It is said that disease and brutal labor destroyed the natives, which consists of the Arawaks, Taino, and Caribs, within 50 years of Columbus' arrival. As the natives dwindled, African slaves were brought to Saint-Domingue. Before the first wave of slaves came, there were British, African, and mixed descent buccaneers, European colonists that lived there. A lot of slaves were forced to work in the coffee and sugar plantations, which grew quickly. During the time that Saint-Domingue was a French colony, 800,000 slaves came from Africa, making up a third of the whole Atlantic slave trade. Can you believe that? There were lots of deaths on the sugar and coffee plantations because of disease and the harsh conditions. Saint-Domingue's slave-based sugar and coffee industry were extremely successful. And in the 1760s, it was the most profitable colony in the Americas. So what was the population of Saint-Domingue? In Saint-Domingue, as you already know, there were the African slaves, people of African descent that were slaves but born in Saint-Domingue, and they were the French colonists. In addition, you also had people with mixed African and European ancestry living there. So the middle of the 18th century, Saint-Domingue society had a strict structure with class and power levels based on race and wealth. Let's try to visualize this. So African-born plantation slaves were at the bottom of the social ladder they spoke different languages because they came from different parts of Africa and they didn't really have an effective way to communicate. Then we had the Creole slaves. And what we mean by the Creole slave is those who were born in the New World and spoke the French Creole dialect. They were slightly above 
the African-born slaves. And then we have the mulatto freedmen or the mixed-race mulatto slaves that were the next levels up. Okay. And then we had the French at the top of the social ladder, but they were also split into two main groups. One group was the petit blanc, who were the shopkeepers, and then the grand blanc, who were the plantation owners, rich merchants, and high officials. The slaves coming in from Africa tried to learn French, but even if they tried to learn French, the French that was spoken by most of the colonists was not quote-unquote noble or high level of French. Some people might have referred to more of a slang. As a result, that created some obstacles in learning French. In addition, the ratio of slaves versus the French colonists were small. At some point, it was nine to one. Closer to the Haitian Revolution, the ratio was 16 to one, meaning for every 16 Africans, there were one French. I've read other reading materials that had the ratio significantly smaller. The environment just described, or the society just described, led to a language whose vocabulary was mostly based on the European colonial language and whose grammar, syntax, and thematics were based on the most influential West African language. Basically, the grammar of Haitian Creole is different from French, but most of the terms, the vast majority of the terms used in Haitian Creole is from French. It is said that the French colonial authorities understood that the language spoken by the majority of the population in Saint-Domingue was not French. They realized the importance of Haitian Creole to some degree. As a result, there were Haitian Creole translations of official legal documents that the French give to the Haitians. Some people argue that Haitian Creole was seen as a form of African resistance against slavery in the colony of Saint-Domingue during the 17th and 18th centuries. Others just believe that the language occurred over time as a result of the mixing and merging that occur to all that live in Saint-Domingue. In Haiti, French was first declared the official language. Even though a small percentage, approximately 10% of Haitians spoke French, it was the official language. In another video, we broke the dynamic of the two languages, French and Haitian Creole in Haiti. Please check the description below for the video link. It wasn't until the 1920s attempts were seriously made to have an official writing system in place for Haitian Creole, which was improved and made widely available in the 1970s. A lot of gains were made in the 1980s as it relates to Haitian Creole. There were educational reforms made to bring Haitian Creole to the forefront. Article 5 of 1987 indicated that Haitians share a common language, Creole, and that Creole and French are the official languages of Haiti. This result in Haiti having two official languages. This was a significant milestone in the country's history as it helped to legitimize and promote the use of Haitian Creole in all aspects of life. Today, the world recognizes Haitian Creole as the language of Haitians. The Haitian population is growing and will continue to grow. Haitians are migrating all over the world. Although important steps were made and Haitian Creole has come a long way in its spoken form, it is still not taught as equally important as French to many Haitians and non-Haitians. I wonder why this is the case, and maybe one day that will change. If you have any thoughts on the matter, please feel free to share in the comment section below. All right? So that was a basic brief history of Haitian Creole. Um, feel free to add more in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video informative, please share it with your family and friends. Thank you in advance. 
If you have not subscribed, we ask that you please support us by subscribing. Follow us on social media at Color My Culture 4. Check us out on Amazon or Etsy by searching for Color My Culture. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Until next time. Bye.